Welcome fellow travelers. Welcome to all who have journeyed this path for a while. Welcome to those who are new to the path. Welcome to those who are not sure where the path lies. Welcome to new visitors and to old friends. Welcome to the young at heart, to those of all ages and colors, all orientations and gender expressions, all abilities and cultures and opinions. Know that you are welcome here, no matter what, for this is God's house and all may enter here. Welcome to everyone. We hope that you find peace and uplift in our worship. I will extol you, O Lord, for you have drawn me up and did not let my foes rejoice over me. O oh Lord, my God, I cried to you for help, and you have healed me. O oh Lord, you have brought up my soul from shoal, restored me to life among those gone down to the pit. Sing praises to the Lord, O oh you faithless ones, and give thanks to the, his holy name. For his anger is but for a moment, his favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may linger for a night, but joy comes with the morning. As for me, I said in my prosperity, I shall never be moved by your favor, O Lord. And you had established me as a strong mountain. You hid your face. I was dismayed. To you, O Lord, I cried, and to the Lord I made supplication. What profit is there in my death if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will it tell you of your faithfulness? Hear me, O Lord, and be gracious to me. O Lord, be my helper. You have turned my mourning into dancing. You have taken off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy so that my soul may praise you and not be silent. O Lord, my God, I will give thanks to you forever. Gratitude, thanksgiving. This psalm is a prayer. It's a recounting of struggles and a thanksgiving to God for what God has done. I will extol you, O Lord, for you have drawn me up and did not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cried to you for help and you have healed me. O Lord, you brought me up, my, you brought up my soul from Sheol, restored me to life among those gone down to the pit. The psalmist has suffered. There is every indication that the psalmist was near death or certainly felt that that was imminent. Like the psalmist, many of us felt like we were in the pit, in Sheol, in hell, over the last 16 months. In the first few weeks, there was kind of that giddy similarity to a snow day. You remember the run on toilet paper? <laughs> I remember the afternoon I visited every grocery store in town looking for black beans. Everyone stayed home. When I'd go out for my morning run, there was no traffic to dodge. Throughout last summer, we made plans. Staff returned briefly to regular hours in the office in anticipation of reopening the building. <laughs> of course, that didn't happen. Rather than going down, the number of cases went up. There were the months of despair we all felt before the vaccines emerged. Do you remember, remember the orange sky and the ash that hung over Albany? With the air toxic and the overflowing hospitals, I changed my ringtone to REM's, it's the end of the world. Yeah, it was dark humor, but the fact that I could still laugh was a good sign. But I think for me, the darkest days were those 
those days of winter, it was those days when my hope waned the most. Those were the days when it was hard to see an end, when it was hard to get out of the bed, when it was hard, just so hard. They were the days when cases and deaths rose week after week after week. And though in this time we have learned that the church is not a building, though the calling of Pastor Eric was affirmed over and over again, though we've begun new ministries and maintained long-term ministries, though we learned that Zoom is a more efficient way to hold board meetings, and though some decided that wearing jammies to church is a new virtue, despite all that, humanity is not, is not made to live in isolated bubbles. We are created to be in relationships. Even introverts need some physical presence to keep their battery charged. And like the psalmist, we emerge today from Sheol. In the psalmist's words of thanksgiving, you have turned my mourning into dancing. You have taken off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy so that my soul may praise you and not be silent. O oh Lord, my God, I will give thanks to you forever. Though the pandemic is not over, challenges still lay before us. We've left the worst of it behind. And today, we emerge from 16 months of worshiping exclusively via Zoom and YouTube. At times, it seemed that this day might never come. <laughs> but it's here. The Apostle Paul wrote, And now faith, hope, and love abide. These three. And the greatest of these is love. Now, I'm not here to contradict Paul. Of course, love is the most important kernel in all of Christ's teachings. I mean, Jesus himself said, there is no greater commandment than love of God and love of neighbor. And yet, we mustn't dismiss hope and faith. They matter too. These three are intertwined with one another. As a congregation that cites the greatest commandment in our vision statement, we can attest to the complexity and difficulty of living love. Living into love requires hope and faith and a healthy dose of grace for one another. We don't always agree on the substance of matters or on the speed of, or even, frankly, the need for change. And still, we choose to live in relationship. We choose to love. But that love takes faith, and trust in the Divine One. The ancient psalmist understood the power in God's love. But this is not a psalm about love. Well, yes, it is about love, but not just about love. Faith matters. This psalm reflects the Israelites' confidence that God is with them. No matter how bad things get, God remains, writes Brueggemann and Bellinger. Israel prays with urgency, but nonetheless with confidence in Yahweh, in God. In its prayer, Israel is sure that Yahweh, that God has the capacity to intervene in its most dire circumstances and turn any near-death condition to life and to well-being. This is the beauty and the power in the Psalms. Facing death, facing hunger, in war, and even in the midst of exile. In all these things, Israel, the psalmists, ultimately have faith that God remains present. Now, 
scholars have multiple theories as to the context of Psalm 30. One of those, according to Jewish scholar A. Cohen, is that it was a hymn of gratitude following a time of pestilence in Israel. <laughs> How perfect for us today. Imagine a time when Israel is emerging from widespread plague. I bet you can. Hear the psalmist's words again. For God's anger is but for a moment. God's favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may linger for the night, but joy comes with the morning. Now, in the scientific era, we understand plagues and pandemic very differently than they did in the ancient world. We know that it is not God's anger, but an infection caused by a virus that leads to COVID-19. We also know that every pandemic comes to an end, though this one has not yet ended. We celebrate the transition into what we hope are the last months of widespread illness and death. However, in the midst of our joy, we need to acknowledge that we are changed. Grief and trauma lingers. Four million human beings have died of COVID-19 worldwide. Four million. I can't even wrap my head around that number. Now, though no one within our church has died of COVID, many in our church have friends and family members who've died or suffered. Our own Maggie sees death on a regular basis as a chaplain. Why did some die and others live? Notes African scholar Nubnago Yanzana, God can use many different ways to heal people. God can heal through prayer alone, but God can also heal through medicine or surgery. And sometimes God may choose not to heal and allow someone to die. But death does not mean that God is absent. It may have been the person's natural time to die. I suspect, I think, I think we expect that there, there is a reason for why someone lives or dies, why someone gets cancer or doesn't. But often good and bad and suffering and wellness are just the nature of the human experience. Life is random. We thought that we were above the natural order of a pandemic. We thought that our medicine and our scientific advances had moved us beyond the deaths of 600,000 of our countrymen and women. Sadly, to be human is not like that. We each carry the scars of the last 16 months in our bodies, in our psyches, and deep within our souls. We are changed. We are not the same church we were in January of 2020. But this I know. God was with us in the isolation. God was with us in the fears and in the heartache. God was with us in the sobs and in the depression. And God is in this place with us now. And despite the trauma we carry, and we'll be processing for a very long time to come, Today is a day for celebration. In the words of the psalmist, you have turned my mourning into dancing. You have taken off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy so that my soul may praise you and not be silent. O oh Lord, my God, I will give thanks to you forever. Amen.